If you have been at church, First Church, for a while, you may know how utterly enamored I am with the cosmos. I literally love the James Webb Telescope and all the people who made this remarkable spacecraft possible. I inherited my love of the skies, the stars, and the entire universe from my father. Even though he tried so patiently to teach me how to see the formations and constellations, which I could never see, Somehow, on perfect nights, I could see the North Star. I did not understand there was a very good reason for that particular star being so visible to me. As you probably know, the North Star is located quite close to the point in the sky where the north rotational axis points. It is a spot called the celestial pole. And as our planets rotate through the night, the stars appear to rotate around the, st- around the sky. Some stars appear to travel great distances over the course of the night. But the North Star is different because it is so close to that celestial pole. Because it is so close, it traces out a very small circle over 24 hours. The North Star always stays roughly in the same place in the sky all the time, which makes it a very reliable way to always find the direction of north. I became quite obsessed with the North Star at a young age. And when it was visible on any given night through all the years of my childhood, I loved that particular night. Because on that night, I could see exactly what my father could see. People have been using the North Star as a guiding light throughout history. In ancient Egypt, which is the area of the world our scripture narrative comes from today, The North Star was linked to Isis, the mother goddess who symbolized life and protection. The North Star has been used throughout history for navigation, for determining time, and for finding one's direction. Throughout the centuries, travelers used the North Star to navigate the seas and land. Due to its fixed position in the sky, they could determine their latitude and find their way. Traveling at night when things were not so clear made this essential. Yet the North Star's importance goes far beyond navigation. Despite changing seasons and other stars moving, the North Star's constant position in the sky is a symbol of stability. Numerous cultures have used the North Star to symbolize guidance, and direction. Individuals have also used it as a guiding light for their own lives because somehow within the mystery of the cosmos throughout all the ages, its presence and its light has provided inspiration and hope, even in the midst of the most difficult times. So imagine for a moment what it might have been like for Moses, a former prince of Egypt, out in the middle of the desert with his father-in-law's sheep, day after day, night after night. What a gift that was from his father-in-law. We are not told if the burning bush came in the day or in the night, But it was impossible to not notice and quickly understand something powerful was occurring. What happened at the burning bush changed not only the life of Moses, but the lives of the people who were enslaved. And while I don't know about you, but I haven't seen any burning bushes lately, seeing the North Star can be a powerful symbol 
for all of us looking for direction. The North Star can be a reminder that we need to know ourselves. We need to know who we are in order to find our own path, our own calling, no matter how hard or uncertain or frightening it may seem. And when the shadows are deep and our future certainty is not guaranteed, the North Star reminds us that we are not alone and there is always a light to follow. This morning in our fall series on reimagining the Ten Commandments, we are deep in the heart of these bigger-than-life commandments, commandments which have for millennia and commandments which have for millennia set standards of moral conduct within the Judeo-Christian tradition. These commandments were birthed during the experience as a, of a people whose every aspect of life had changed. It's hard for many of us, but not for all of us, to imagine what it was like for the Hebrew people to leave the only home they had ever known and begin a journey to an unknown destination. They had been enslaved for 250 years, according to the genealogies, or perhaps 430 years as written in the book of Exodus. But as their sacred text tells us, by the time the Ten Commandments were given to them, they were weary. They had run for their lives. They had almost drowned. They had come very close to starvation. And because all of this and more, they, like any of us, began to vehemently complain. Somewhere in the middle of that 40-year wilderness wandering, they received these instructions that were to become guidelines for their lives. These commandments were their North Stars, North Stars for them as individuals and perhaps more importantly, for them as a people. These commandments drew the boundary lines and were intended to give moral clarity to their new world. I think it is fair to say we are living in a time when we need moral clarity. But we do not need the morality that tells us who we can be, who we can love, what we can do with our bodies, and what we must believe. Rather, we need moral clarity that will lead us through challenges and crisis. We need moral clarity that will cultivate regular introspection, introspection that will help us ground ourselves in self-awareness that will help us live our lives using our unique gifts and talents and integrate who we truly are at the core of our being in and through all the concentric circles of our lives. Anna Bladell, one of the founders of Enfleshed, who have given us these beautifully reimagined Ten Commandments, insists that at the core of who we are, there is a liberatory that brings a sense of freedom within the rhythm of wholeness and healing and goodness. This is a freedom that allows us to rethink and reimagine beliefs about ourselves and others and what we can accomplish together. In a sacred circle that Anna was privileged to be in recently, the members were asked to listen deeply to their own lives as they asked themselves some extremely important questions. These are amazing questions. So I pose them to us today. Think in these moments about what and who do you love most of all?
Which people? What values? What ideas? What experiences constitute the core, the through line, the pulsing heart of all that you hold precious, sacred, and irreplaceable? They were asked to imagine these things as their North Stars. More than a destination, Anna says, North Stars reveal possibilities. More than a map from point A to point B, they help us orient to the many ways we might make and find our way through storms and chaos into healing. In order for those Ten Commandments, as originally written or reimagined, to become real to us, we have to know the why of their importance. That's the reason these questions carry so much value. Anna writes, there is a raw power in knowing what and who we love and cherish. There is a raw power in tapping into what and who guides and orients our lives. And there is a raw power in confronting what and who will guide and order our collective life together as a church, as a country, as a world. This has been a year of rupture of pain. And this is nowhere more abundantly clear than in the part of the world that speaks directly to us today and where these commandments were first written. In flesh, reimagine sixth and seventh commandments say, do not be destructive and be faithful to the commitments you make. I have not spoken in a sermon this last year about the horrors of what is happening in Israel and Gaza. There are many reasons Some of them are very rational, very sensible. But the reality is, I haven't known what to say. And there is no excuse. I really didn't want to preach this sermon today. In fact, there are 24 people, most of them who are here today, that were with me all day yesterday that can assert that I did everything I could do not to go home and write a sermon. Yet in my searching, I did read this week a review of the new book by ta Coates. The title of the book is The Message. My friend, the reviewer, wrote in intertwined essays about his recent trips to three places, Senegal, South Carolina, and Palestine, the award-winning author unravels the vital relationship between stories and our view of the world, past and present. History is not inert, right, Coates, but contains within it a story that implicates the present. And framed in a certain way, a story that can be told that justifies the present political order. Hence his theme that stories have untold power both to keep unjust systems in power when myths are upheld and to promote humane solutions when the truth is told. By the time my friend shared their review, I had read Anna Bladell's words that she had written for In Flesh blog their blog called Moments for Common Nourishment. Let me just say she didn't mince any words, and it cut me to the core. 
I won't tell you what Anna wrote because I want you to read it for yourselves. And I want you to read Coates' book with me. This is a time of unknowing. But what I do know for certain is that we cannot stop believing in and looking for responses that lead to peace, even when we are unsure about what is ours to do. When I remember those nights long ago standing in our backyard, looking into the heavens with my dad, I always remember the joy of finding that North Star and knowing it would always and forever be there to guide the way. A wise minister this week reminded their congregation and me of the words of Toy Derricote, who wrote, Joy is an act of resistance. Joy in the worst of times? Yes. Joy when there feels like there is no solution? Yes. Joy when we least expect it? Joy as evidence of mystery? Yes. The poet was writing about her love for a goldfish when she wrote those words. A goldfish that is her North Star. In the week to come, I hope you will look for your North Stars. And I hope that in looking, you may find the joy that is always possible. And when you find that joy, I hope you will not keep it just for yourself, but that you will share it as together we all look for what is ours to do and for the path that is forward. May it be so. Amen.